Handling your web app's authentication securely is extremely important. If you are considering the old email and password sign-in, it's really not secure. You would have to store those credentials yourself, and if there's ever a data breach, you're the one on the hook. A much better approach is to use common third-party services, like Sign In with Google. I'll show you exactly how to do this, so let's get started. First, let's create a prototype, a simple landing page with the title, My Brand New Web App. There it is, looking good. Our first step is to publish the app. This gives us a backend in Firebase to handle authentication. Once it's published, we'll get configuration values like the API key and ID. To publish an app, you need to select a billing account. If you don't already have one, you can create it right there. People often ask if you can publish to the cloud without a credit card. No cloud services host web apps entirely for free. While free tiers exist, they are for a limited time and still typically require credit card details. Now, let's publish it. This usually takes about 5 minutes, so I will cut the recording here for a moment. And it's ready. Let's click the link and check out the app. Now that our app is hosted in Firebase, we need to enable authentication. Let's head over to the Firebase console. There are multiple ways to set up authentication, and Firebase provides video tutorials on how to do it. I'm just going to click the Get Started button. The first step involves choosing the sign-in method from native and third-party providers. We'll select Google because it is a very common choice. Then, enable it and choose a support email. This email is displayed to users when they authenticate. You can use your Firebase account email or a Google Group email. If you are unsure how to create a group email, simply go to Google Groups and create a new group. It only takes a second. Okay, now authentication is enabled, but we're not done yet. We still need to create a sign-in button and add some environment variables to tell the app how to connect to the back end. So, let's make the button. I'll ask the AI to add a sign-in button that, once clicked and authenticated, will show the user's name instead of the button. A quick side comment, it is generally a good practice to use Google's pre-approved buttons, but since this is just an example, I will leave it as the AI created it. This button won't work yet because it's not configured. I'm going to click it anyway so you can see the error message it gives and then recognize that error when you are working on your own project. API key is not valid. Please pass a valid API key. So, let's go to the code view. We need to configure a few environment variables. In this environment, they are defined in the .env file. It is possible that the AI coded your app in a way that these variables are not in the .env file. If that happens, just ask it to recreate the app with the Firebase configuration variables defined there. This keeps sensitive information secure and prevents potential leaks to version control, which could leave your business vulnerable to hackers. To get the correct configuration values, let's head back to the Firebase console. Go to Project Settings and then scroll to the bottom of the page. There they are. I'll copy them. I'll paste them here so I can cut and paste them one by one. We are ready. Let's save the file. Now that the configuration is complete, we need to publish the app again for it to work. 
and the app is published again. This still will not work, but I want to show you another error message, so let's click the sign in button. I'll right click the page and choose inspect. Firebase error, unauthorized domain. This happens because we need to tell the back end which domains are authorized for signing in. So let's go back to the Firebase console. Click Authentication and then select the Settings tab. There is a setting called Authorized Domains and it does not contain our test address. So let's copy and paste it there. Let's try signing in again. It looks like it's working this time. And there you can see the username instead of the sign in button. Nice, it worked. Let's perform an ultimate test using two browser windows with two different Google accounts to see if it truly works. Then we can be 100% sure it is implemented correctly. It looks like the ultimate test works. I can refresh both pages and they remain logged in within their own sandboxes. We can also go to the Firebase console to see who is logged into our web app. Now being able to log in is likely not anyone's ultimate goal. The real goal is to create pages where the user needs to be authenticated before they can enter. Let's tell the AI. If the user clicks the Get Started Free button, a welcome page will appear. However, if the user is not logged in, an Access Denied message will be displayed. Let's sign in. OK, we get an error message. Unauthorized domain. This is happening because we are trying to sign in from the test view and not from our actual app. We can also add this test view to our authorized domains by opening a new window and then copying and pasting that address into the authorized domains. Let's try again now. We see a nice welcome page and then let's log out. That worked too. Access denied. Nice. Everything is working. Our project is not yet complete. When a web app requires authentication, it always stores sensitive information in the back end. So we need to run a security scan for the code base. The minimum security test would be a static application security scan. So let's see how that's done. First, we need to export the code base to GitHub. Go to the code view, and before exporting, check the .git ignore file to ensure it contains the .env file, which has the Firebase configuration details. It must not leak to GitHub. Yes, the .env file is ignored. Then go to Source Control and click Publish Branch. You need to allow GitHub to view your code base. GitHub will need to authenticate, so you will need to provide a code that is shown in the dialog box. Just click copy and continue. Paste the code and click continue. Then click authorize Visual Studio code. Provide your GitHub password. I'm assuming you already have a GitHub account. Congratulations, you're all set. Now let's head back to the code view in Firebase Studio. We have two options, publish to a private repo or a public repo. I will choose to publish to a public repository successfully published and there is the name of the new repo let's open it on github and there is our code base the first thing to check is that the env file is not there it is filled with sensitive information and must not end up in a public repo for everyone to see now moving on to security scanning there are many ways to do it but i use sneak it's a good option and very easy to use just go to app.sneak.io you can get started for free and no credit card is required. Sign in with your GitHub account. If you haven't used Sneak before, it'll ask for permission to access your repos. I've already done that, so I'm taken to the dashboard. Then, click Add Projects and select GitHub. 
Choose the GitHub repository that you want to import to Sneak. Importing will take a few minutes because after importing, Sneak will scan the repository with the scans it deems suitable. And now it's ready. There is a code analysis scan and a package.json scan. Code analysis did not find anything because our code base is rather small, but package.json found three issues. These are issues where some dependency or library is outdated and vulnerable to exploits. Let's take one of them and fix it. This particular issue is information exposure caused by an outdated Next.js package, meaning an attacker could potentially access sensitive information. To fix it, we need to upgrade the Next.js package to 15.2.4 or later. Let's copy that and provide it to the AI. After fixing, you need to perform functional tests again. For example, let's try if the authentication still works. It works. Then, let's export the code base to GitHub again to see if the security scan accepts the fix. Now in Sneak, let's click Retest Now. And it worked! There are only two issues left. This is the process for fixing security issues. You have to go through all of them and after you have fixed them all, your application will be secure. Now, if the code analysis had found an issue, the process is quite similar. Here's an example from another project. You only need to copy the description of the issue and you must also provide the AI with the file name and line number of the issue. In this case, the line number is 58. Then, simply paste the issue to the AI and ask it to fix it. That's very easy and no coding skills are needed. After the fix, check the functionality to ensure it is correct and then run the security scans again. To keep your app safe, it's good to review best practices for identity authentication. I know some of these might be a bit beyond your current knowledge, but the point is to educate yourself little by little to gain knowledge. The good news is that by using Google Authentication, many of these practices are already covered such as centralized identity management and secure password storage. You'll need to handle some practices yourself, such as the least privilege principle, giving users only the permissions they need for their tasks. If your web app is simple and for single role users, this is less of a concern. Finally, educate yourself on security practices and potential threats. Keep in mind, a static scan which we did is just a minimum for security. Other tools and services like manual penetration testing also exist. If you have a large user base and sensitive data, consider a service like HackerOne to get manual penetration testing for your app. Just a comment, I do not sell any security services or get paid by these companies. I am simply trying to educate you about the options available. Let's move on to debugging. If you come across an error you need to investigate, you can right-click the page and then click Inspect in the Chrome browser. You will find all the errors that occurred during the process there. If your developer tools view is different, try to find the Console tab. Then you can copy the errors you find to the AI and ask it what they are about. If you don't see anything useful in the browser, you can also check backend logs. Go to Firebase Console, click Build, then App Hosting. You'll see your backends there. Just click View. If there are any errors, they'll be listed right on the main page. If not, open the Logs tab. That's where you'll find detailed info like backend requests and log messages. Now let's talk about pricing. Before you publish your app, it's a good idea to know what all of this will cost. Currently, there are two pricing plans. Spark and Blaze. Spark is free and Blaze is pay as you go, which is my current plan. Let's look at the pricing comparison. There are prices for storage, bandwidth and so on, but let's focus on the prices for authentication only. If you are using a free plan, you can have up to 50,000 monthly active users. If you use the pay as you go plan, it states no cost up to 50,000 users. 
If you are unsure how many active users you have, go to the Firebase console, then Authentication and then Usage. There you will find graphs for daily and monthly active users. One more thing I want to show you is how to take down your app if you ever need to. Go to the Firebase console, then App Hosting. Click View Backend and then Settings. There you can disable your domain so it will no longer be public. If you want to scrap your backend, you can click Delete Backend. You can also go to Project Settings and remove the app or delete the project entirely. That wraps up this tutorial. If you liked it, please share it with your coding buddies. Happy coding and I will see you in the next tutorial.